Okay, we are here now with Garrett Wong from Star Trek Voyager. He is back at Sci-Fi Scarb online. Uh, been a few years since he was last with us, and last minute he's jumped on board to come and give us a quick interview. Garrett, nice to see you. Good to see you, Chris and Jade. Yeah, we've also got Jade, yes, our um, additional interviewer. Jade has been working at Sci-Fi as a volunteer for the last few years, massive Star Trek Voyager fan. She's come to help me today. So, Garrett, well, how are you, first of all? Because it's been a while. Oh man, I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, I haven't been to the UK in quite some time, and uh, I probably won't be able to get back to the UK in quite some time at this point. <laughs> How are you coping with lockdown in Canada? Um, it, it's it's been uh, it's been a very interesting time, definitely. Um, Megan has been a little bit under the weather, so I've been doing the majority of the cooking and cleaning, and you know, I'm I'm having a whole new appreciation for everything she's done <laughs> yeah so uh other than that it's uh it's a lot of going to bed whenever i want to waking up kind of late and getting extra sleep you know as much as i can and just trying to stay just trying to stay healthy and, and taking as much uh, uh immune boosting kind of things that i can uh right now uh, because i'm still i still have to go out to grocery stores and and it's funny, like I'm literally, if I see anybody walking anywhere near me, I just, I just do a U-turn, find another aisle, you know, I'm like, all right, if there's not six feet between us, you are not going to get anywhere close to me, so um, I, am literally, I actually, you know what, if I, if I pass somebody closer than six feet, I hold my breath, I just don't even breathe, I'm like, okay, nothing is going in this nose or this mouth, I close my eyes, you know, I just have the walking. mask on though, walking on the gas mask. I, you know what, I should just get a scuba, a, a snorkeling mask and just walk around with one of those, that could probably help right anyway let's get on with some star trek questions because that's yeah. what you want to hear isn't it so yeah. i'll start with Garrett. could you tell us please what was it that got you into acting in the first place why why acting and what was the path that you took to get there yeah um well i was pre-med so i was my original plan when i went to university was i was going to be a doctor a medical doctor um specifically anesthesiologist so i i thought that would be um you know, a fun field to enter into, the guy that knocks you out before your surgery. <laughs> uh, but after a couple, you know, a couple of years at university, I decided that really wasn't what I wanted to do. That's something that was sort of, you know, put in the minds of every Chinese American kid growing up in the U.S. is like, you need to go to medical school and be a doctor. And, uh, um, and you'll get instant uh, you know, respect and, and, and wealth and this and that, but it really wasn't, um, it really wasn't my path that I felt that I wanted to take any longer. So I started taking theater classes in, um, at UCLA. And I remember the day that I called my mom and I told her I wasn't going to med school any longer. And she's, she literally, she was so shocked. And she said, what? No. Well, you're you're going to law school? I go no, not law school. Oh, uh, are you going to get your your MBA? You're going to business school? I said no, not going to do business school. And then I told her I was going to acting. She dropped the phone. <laughs> <laughs> she picked that phone back up and she says, "Okay, you know what? You name one Asian man. Name one Chinese man that's made it in Hollywood." And I immediately answered Bruce Lee. And she immediately answered, he's dead, pick another. So I he had nothing, no one to really fill in the blank for. So it sp I spent about five years just training, doing theater, and, um, and basically arguing with my parents about my decision to go into acting. Um, uh, and, you know, to be more specific, what I truly loved was the show Saturday Night Live. I love sketch comedy, and I love uh, doing characters and impersonations. Uh, uh, and I thought, you know, well, you know, acting is sort of like doing, it is also doing characters. It's not necessarily always comedic, obviously, but um, I really felt that that getting onto Saturday Night Live was probably going to be more difficult than to just be an actor. And the funny thing, in, in their 45 year history of Saturday Night Live, they finally have an Asian person on that show. I mean, can you imagine, like, it took until the 45th year for them to include. So I really felt that Lorne Michaels, the, the showrunner for Saturday Night Live all these decades, has just been racist towards Asians. I, I don't get it. I mean, you see all these different people on that show. And um, 
to say that Asians are not funny is, is completely wrong. Uh, there are very funny Asian comedians out there, but just recently they were out. Um, but yeah, but I, my decision to change in, to go into acting would happen at university. And uh, uh, it was a difficult path because without your parents' support, you typically, um, um, most people end up abandoning whatever plans they have that the parents aren't supporting. But um, thank God I landed on Voyager. That was my 32nd audition. And um, I, I just, it really changed everything, you know, my entire life to be cast in Star Trek. Um, and they, that was a f two and a half month process uh, from the first audition to the final yes. Um, they, oh my gosh, I had so many auditions. And then after, after uh, it was between me and this kid from New York and the kid from New York was sent home. So I asked the casting assistant, and I said, did I, so I got it. She says, well, not exactly. They're now going to take two weeks off and they're going to search for older Ensign Kims. So, and so when they're going to, they were going to put out a, you know, this, they're going to put out this breakdown looking for older Ensign Kims. So 30 something year old Ensign Kims, and they whittled it down to one guy. So it was me, 20 something Ensign Kim against 30 something Ensign Kim. And finally, um, you know, I beat that guy out. Thank God. Uh, that would have been really weird to have a 30 year old Ensign Kim, I think, you know, just a, an older guy. Uh, so I got lucky and, uh, and now we're here. <laughs> right. We actually have, um, Garrett, we have Rachel who's going to come online to do um, a video call and have, have a quick yeah. question. That's okay. Sure. Sure. Uh, I'll ask to start her video and unmute her. So Rachel, with it. Can you hear us, Rachel? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. And there's your video. Let's, Get rich done. Do you want to tell us what your question is for Garrett, please? Um, well, I thought really long and hard about this question because I wanted to ask you something that possibly you haven't been asked before. So, <laughs> good luck on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, so, Garrett, have, would you rather fight one horse sized duck or 100 duck sized horses? <laughs> one horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses that's right <laughs> um i would have to say i'm gonna go for the hundred horses duck uh the hundred duck sized duck horses. horses yeah because like you know i think i could probably climb up a tree and they wouldn't be able to get me but the horse sized duck I know ducks can be very territorial and quite, you know, uh, angry if you're near their young. So th that would depend. If that horse-sized duck was a female mother duck, I would not want to mess with it. But if it was a male duck, maybe I would fight that one. So that's a very, that is, no one has ever asked that question. That's Yes! <laughs> <laughs> is he always a phaser against the ducks, though? That's the question of the horses. Can we have a phaser in that? Oh, I was just talking about how fast, if I could outrun these guys. I'm not actually... <laughs> I mean, that would be unfair to ducks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other questions for us, Rachel? One more, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, uh, I've seen a lot of people asking this one uh, on the uh, various Star Trek related Facebook groups. So, sorry, yeah. I've been asked this one before, Garrett. But um, obviously, Picard's come out now. Um, and so I was kind of wondering, you know, if Harry Kim was to be in Picard season two, what do you think he might be doing? Probably getting a promotion is my guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's hope so. I mean, really? <laughs> well, honestly, I, you know, I am watching Picard myself when seeing Jerry Ryan, I, I, I kept thinking, why the heck isn't Kim? Kim should be, Kim should be there as, you know, along with Jerry Ryan as one of those rebels, you know, that would, that would make sense. But you reckon he's a rebel? Cool. Yeah, he should be, Kim should be Mr. S Mr. Seven at that, at this point. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, he should come back and say, you know what? You never should have been with Chakotay. You should have been with Kim the whole time. But then now in Picard, they have this storyline where they show Seven as possibly being a lesbian, right? So, yeah. you know, let's we'll see how that rolls. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there, there's, a, there's just some bitterness on my part that they didn't let me go through with that, that, you know, the, the, traction that I had towards Seven in, in Voyager in the one episode. Were there conversations about that? Well, yeah. I mean, she even says, do you wish to copulate, you know, in that episode? And I said, <laughs> no. 
my character says no, like an idiot. It's like, what are you doing? You totally want to be with this woman. Oh, right. and no. And uh, that became, you know, the story of my life afterwards. Like Kim's always just getting the raw end of the deal, pretty much. So, yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Well, Love you done. loads. Cool. Thank you very much for your question, Rachel. We will see you later. See you later. Bye for now. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, Jade, do you have the first question from the Facebook group, please? I do, yes. Um, so, Garrett, the first question comes from James Porter. Um, similar along the lines about Star Trek Picard, um, given that there are possible uh, quite a lot of opportunities for cameos, uh, would you return to the role of Harry Kim if you were asked? Um, uh, yeah, I, I think... Um... I think it's really wonderful that we have so much new Star Trek content on television now. It's really nice to see that. So um, I would definitely come in a heartbeat. I'm just, I'm almost thinking about what I need to do to, to pitch the, my storyline to be a little more proactive to make these writers remember and think, oh, okay, uh, we could use them in this capacity. So um, like if I watch, watching Picard now, I'm very envious of Captain Rios. Uh, and this actor's ability to play multiple characters, like he plays the holodeck version, you know, the holographic versions of himself with different accents. And that's, as I said earlier, my whole thing is doing characters Saturday Night Live. I would have loved an accent. And that's something that I wasn't able to, uh, to do on Voyager. Like every time they, and the crazy thing was every time they allowed any character, whether it was series regular or guest star on Voyager to do an accent or an impersonation of another Voyager cast member, they always made me be my character, be in the scene, in the background. And I'm sitting here just dying as, as I'm watching people do their version of Janeway. Barkley does his Janeway. Seven of Nine does her doctor impersonation. And I'm going, I'm dying. I'm the one who does impersonations, not them. So uh, in a perfect world, the perfect role for me would probably be that role if I was able to do a, any role in Star Trek right now. But if they did ask me to come in do, to, to reprise Harry Kim, I would do it in a heartbeat. Well, last now though, can we have some impersonations of the other cast members or is that too much on the spot to ask you right now? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I heard John Janeway on that, um, that documentary, The Captains, which was amazing, to be fair. The um, thrust is ready, Mr. Paris, but you do it so, so well. The rest is ready, Mr. Paris. Um, I think... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mom always gets mad at me. She writes me emails and she says, stop doing her impersonation. She has feelings, too. I'm like, okay, I get it, Mom. I get it. I'm not trying to make fun of her. It's just her, her voice is so so specific you know what i'm saying that um and that's the thing if you don't have a very specific voice it's harder for an impersonator to do your voice right so someone like george Takei, i mean the way george talks up and down like this it's very easy to find a george impersonation because his voice his accent is so specific so you know it's it's if you don't have that it, it doesn't it doesn't work right it has to be like for instance roxanne dawson torres difficult to do that voice very difficult um but Janeway with that <laughs> that's that I don't know it's kind of like helium and smurf mixed together is what it is a little bit <laughs> and Catherine Hepburn a little <laughs> sprinkled in and then you get a little yeah 